All right, I've been hinting at the fact that I was going to talk a little bit. Since I don't have a guest seat, on, on the mornings that I don't have a guest, I become my own guest. So it's kind of like you all get a chance to get a chance to listen to the world according to, to Mark or the world how Mark sees it, <laughs> however you want to call it. But in any event, I had a wonderful time. I don't know if any of them are listening on Thursday night, I believe it was. Yeah, it was Thursday night. I'm in the class of 80, and we were supposed to have our 40th class reunion this year. And because of Rona, because of COVID-19, so far we've been unable to do it in this particular year, which is the 40th year. We graduated in June of 1980, and we were looking to hold our reunion somewhere around the spring of 2020 or June 2020 or somewhere around there wasn't able to do it but we have been getting together on like everything else on the computer on zoom or google meet or what have you and I hadn't been on any of the calls first I didn't I didn't realize they were doing that because I don't I don't follow the page that closely I, I look at it every now and again but I don't follow it that closely so I didn't realize they were actually doing the zoom calls at least once or twice a month where the classmates get together. So I received this text the other morning saying, uh, do we were having the call on Thursday night? And I said, you know what? I saw the text. I said, I'm going to make it my business to be on that call. And sure enough, whenever I logged in, there were a couple of people I hadn't seen in about the 40 years that we've been out. And then others I've seen throughout the time period. But when I tell you that we had some really good laughs and some good fun. I mean, I don't know what I have been missing if the other calls have been that lively. I mean, we I mean, and the thing is, we could go back and think 40 years ago, mind you, 40 years ago. And it seems like it was just yesterday. It seems like it was four days ago and it was 40 years ago. And yet, I mean, the memories were clear as we were talking and laughing some things just pop back into my mind of things that happened between 1976 and 1980 because I started high school in 1976 and graduated in 1980. And see, I have no problem with sharing it because if you do the math, you can figure out the age. At least you ought to be able to. <laughs> if you can do the math, you ought to be able to figure out approximately about you know my age group. And I have no shame in my game about that because I'm just... We were talking about thankful a couple of minutes ago, thankful and still glad to be alive because there are not many. And we talked about this the other night about how many of our classmates we've lost because I graduated in a class of 543. And out of that 543, we've lost a significant number of the 500 plus kids that we graduated with. A lot of them are no longer with us here on the face of the earth. One of the questions was, and that's the other thing, what they do on the page is they'll throw out a question. They'll throw out a question on the Facebook page. Again, I haven't followed the page, so a lot of the stuff I actually missed. I'm going to have to follow the page a little bit closer. But one of the questions they had on the, the page was, is your high school crush still alive? Is, is your high school crush still living or, or passed away? And oddly enough, my high school crush passed away like not long after high school. <laughs> not long after we graduated within the first four or five years my high school crush had passed away. we were very young like 24 23 24 years old whenever my high school crush passed away so that was an interesting question in terms of is your high school crush still alive and i can i, I can go through my yearbook and start picking out people who are no longer here, people who I sat next to in classes, people who I sat next to in trigonometry class, people who made me laugh, people who I've made them laugh, who are no longer here. So a few minutes ago when I was talking about being grateful and thankful, yes, we need to be grateful and thankful that we're still here. As long as there's life, there's hope. Now, that's not saying life is going to be easy. Some of us may be struggling. Some of us may have illness. Some of us may be hurting. Some of us may have pain. Some of us, but you know what? As long as there's life, there's hope. So I don't know if any of my classmates are listening or not. Anybody who was on the call the other night, but if you want to, you want to call and shout somebody out or let me know that you're listening to me this morning because they even talk. Hey, what, what days are you on the radio? They asked me, what days are you on the radio? So I said, nope, Saturday mornings 
only. Yeah, a couple of them chimed in. Yep, every Saturday. I see him on Facebook. I see him on this. Yep, so if any of the classmates, class of 80 Eastside High School, if you happen to be listening this morning, the number is 973-720-2738. You can give a call and shout somebody out, shout a loved one out. I tell you, I had some good laughs. And like I said, no, for the most part, there was no shame in folks' game. I had one brother said he'd been divorced three times. I said, go ahead now. I, said, I don't care if I get married 10 times. I'm going to do it till I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but those were the kind of laugh. I mean, we had some some really good fun on there in terms of teasing each other from back in the day, as they say. Uh, with one another question that came up was, and it was an interesting spin on how this question is usually posed, because a lot of times the question would be, you know, if you could go back, you know, 30, 40 years ago, what would you change? What would you have done differently? But the question was, name something that occurred in your four years that you would love to experience again. Needless to say, it brought up a bunch of laughs because you know how our minds, our minds go there. But give it an experience that you would like to feel again. Interesting question. So. The first young man that answered the question, which I'm glad he answered the way he did, because now it put my mind in a different place, was, you know what? He was on a basketball team. And when the coach changed the way they enter the gymnasium, I think I mean, we were at Eastside Ghosts. And what he said was the, they had this big paper ghost in front of the door. And when it was time for the basketball team to come out, they burst through this paper and on to the gym floor, of course, with screaming and yelling fans and he says i wish i could do have that feeling again and I, I i understood what walt was talking about because now once he said that it took me back to the first time when i was introduced as the accompanist for the concert choir i can remember that i remember the song i played and everything and i think i may have shared this on the air at some point or another in terms of when i first entered east side the first between September and, and December, I had started playing for the for the different groups. But there was another young man who ultimately became my fraternity brother who just passed away last year. It was Dr. Thomas Page. Thomas Page was playing for the choirs at the time. And when I entered the school, knowing how to play the piano, I started playing. And ultimately, Thomas was like, great, somebody else is here. And Thomas moved on to work on other things. And I took over for the four years from 1976 until I graduated in 1980, I worked with one of the, the most wonderful people and musicians in the world to me. And that was none other than Fran Kubian, Francis Kubian. And I became Miss Kubian's accompanist for the concert choir, Girls Glee, Boys Glee, Jazz Ensemble, all of the singing groups at Eastside High School at that time. I had the opportunity to play for, to accompany Miss Kubian. She would direct and I would play. But I remember the first concert because every year, this is again going back in the day and how things have changed, not necessarily for the better. Eastside had concerts. We had to do performances and we would perform a holiday concert or Christmas concert. And in the spring, we performed what they call Sights and Sounds. The Sights and Sounds concert was a combination of the art department and the music department, the art department and all the kids and all their drawings who were majoring in art and who was good in art, their art was displayed all around the school. And then we had a performance, a musical performance that had the jazz band, had the concert choir, had all the music groups. So for the winter concert, that winter, I didn't play the keyboards for that particular concert, for the Christmas concert. I played the bells, the xylophone. I played all these, you know, smaller instruments. But by the sights and sounds concert in the spring, I was now up on the stage on the grand piano. And I remember Miss Kubian introducing me. And I remember her telling the audience about this young man. He's come to us, so forth and so on. He's my accompanist, yada, 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 yada. And the first song that I played was Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. That was the first song that I played with the concert choir. And I remember to this minute, as I tell this story, after she finished introducing me and looking at me and I hit those first chords in Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. And to this day, that's one of my favorite Elton John songs. So I'm sharing that story to say, whatever that question came up, what, what feeling 
If you could go back and experience that again, what might that be? That's what came to my mind was when I was first introduced on that stage at Eastside High School as Fran Kubian's accompanist. Matter of fact, I remember in the Christmas concert, a couple of the songs that I wound up playing, the bells and the xylophone and the clock and the clock and the, all those little I remember, you know, again, it's still to this day is one of my favorite songs. Do you hear what I hear? That was during the Christmas concert. Bobby Wortham was the soloist. Do you hear what I hear? And I was playing the bells and the, and the xylophone and all the other, you know, other instruments. So just talking with my classmates immediately zoomed me back between 1976 and 1980. Those four years. And I'm looking forward to our reunion. Whatever we can finally happen. It may not happen until 2021, 2022. By that time, it will be 41, 42 years out. But it's got to happen. We need to happen because, like I said, we've lost so many people that for those of us who are left at the time that we haven't, it, you know, we, it will be a wonderful time. But if, in the meantime, the Zoom call work. I, as far as I can, if I can help it, I don't intend to miss another one as long as I know that it's going on and my schedule permits. But they were some good times. They really were. And I wouldn't, I've, I've said this before and I'll continue to say this. I would not trade my time of being a child and a teenager with these children and teenagers now. I wouldn't trade it for all the money in the world, for all the tea in China. If somebody said, if you could be a child right now compared to when you were a child, would you trade? No. Because back then, it was some good times. The 60s, as turbulent as it was for the adults and the 70s, as we were coming about and eight, it was still some good time. It was so much different than today. If the killing was going on and the violence was going on like it is now, then we didn't know anything about it. It's one or the other. I don't know which. I personally don't think the violence that we're constantly exposed to now was going on to this degree. I really don't. Of course, there was always people getting killed. Of course, there was always things going on. Of course, there was always a war, Vietnam War, and this and that. But it wasn't to the degree that we're experiencing now. Just straight up hatred, just straight up senseless killings and acts just makes no sense whatsoever. I don't keep up with the local news here. I usually am <laughs> stuck on the pandemic and, and listening to the national news and, and what our so-called president is doing and all that kind of stuff. I kind of keep up with that, but I don't keep up with what's going on right here in the city. And so when I'm talking to folks, like I was talking to my sister last night, she just started saying, well, did you hear about there was two pregnant young ladies who were shot over the last week? Like, no, I didn't know anything about that. I mean, the, just the, just straight up. I mean, and, so, and this takes me into my whole conversation about Halloween that I was talking about. And then I'll probably be done with this soapbox moment, if you will. A podcast episode. <laughs> the world according to Mark. As a kid, my sister and I, yes, we did go out for Halloween. We went out trick-or-treating. Matter of fact, I shared with my students yesterday a picture of me and my sister in costume. One of our years, I was dressed as a clown and she was dressed as Snow White or a princess or something. I don't know what it was. I have to look at the picture again. But I think I was Bozo the Clown. Fitting. <laughs> but I was I was a clown. I don't know who was Bozo or who, but I had on a clown costume and she had on like a princess costume or a fairy tale costume or something. And we could walk the block. Now, my parents didn't let us go. We didn't go far. That we didn't do. But we walked our neighborhood to people's houses that we knew people on the block. We might would go to the store down at the corner. And that was kind of the extent. But even with that, we would come back with a bag full of goodies. The only thing during that time frame that people would say was just make sure if you got an apple or apples in your bag, Make sure you cut it open first before you bite into it. Because the only thing that really was going on kind of along those lines at that time was you might get some prankster or some evil person that might put a razor blade in the apple. So they would say, always cut your apples open before you bit into them, slice them up to make sure a razor blade wasn't put in. But that was about the extent of it. But then as the years went on, 
it just started getting more and more nefarious. It started getting more and more evil. Folks started putting drugs and, and lacing the candy. Like the same type of things like that went on with the whole Tylenol thing that you could potentially get a piece of candy that could kill you right there on the spot. Folks started lacing candy. Folks started doing other things with it. Then when the kids were going out, you had folks that would literally assault them. As the kids are trying to do their little trick-or-treating and going from house to house, whatever, you'd have older folks, grown-ups and teenagers now assaulting them. Or either, of course, you are, every now and again, even when I was a kid, you had a prankster that might run by and try to grab your bag. But I didn't even experience that. But that kind of stuff, again, right? But it just got to the point where now people were getting beat up and assaulted and all kinds of crazy things. So as the kids went on, folks almost stopped going up and down the streets, going from house to house. Because the other thing was sometimes you might get a kid that was on their own that went to a house that got snatched into the house. And again, other nefarious acts going on. So people, we, we, we kind of moved on to where people, you know, parents started saying, no, we're no longer going to let our kids walk up and down the street, go from house to house. They started now, you know, taking them to the mall. They take the kids to the mall. They stay with them. They go to the stores. All right. That's where it kind of moved to. And now it's to the point where it's rare, which I'm OK with, because the flip side, the same way I wouldn't want to be someone on the receiving end of anything on Halloween. I wouldn't want to be any on the giving end of Halloween. I got to the point over the years where I would just throw like some nickels or quarters or pennies or something in the bag, because what I didn't want, because that's how litigious of a society we've become. I didn't want somebody to say, I got that candy from that house. That's where I got sick off of. So I stopped, I stopped giving out any kind of food, any kind of anything. If somebody came, you know, they might get a dollar. They might get a couple quarters. They might get nickels, pennies, whatever. But I wouldn't give anything that someone could turn around and say, I got it from that house. And that's what made me sick. All right. So then... As I got older, I kind of did a little bit of research on Halloween and it kind of sort of, if you look at the history of it, started out in a, in a positive vein. But again, it got twisted. And so now I don't do anything with Halloween at all because it has gotten so twisted and folks take it and they, you know, they do so many different things that really is the, how the day is not about. All right. So that's where I kind of tuned out and turned off from Halloween. I don't do the Halloween thing. I just I just don't. I'm not into ghosts. I'm not into goblins. I'm not into blood. I'm not into having, you know, the representation that looked like I got stabbed. I'm not into the gore. I'm not I'm not into none of that. And so for me, Halloween, it was just like, you know what? I don't I don't do Halloween. And that's that's my reason. Now, for those of you who do Halloween, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> and I know that's not grammatically correct, but I'm not mad at you. If you do Halloween, that's you. As long as you're not bothering me. But I don't do the gore, the blood, because that's the other thing. We Sadly, we have enough of that in reality. That's the other piece. Like what we were kind of doing as art form and fun and play now is reality. We have enough blood and gore and, and, and everything else that we don't have to have Halloween. We have it in reality. All right, last thing. I am well steeped in Norman Vincent Peale. I've read many of the power of positive thinking books and all that kind of stuff. As much as I know Norman Vincent Peale, power of positive thinking... I can tell you this. We are not going to be able to positive talk this virus away. We are not going to be able to say it's rounding the corner enough times for it to go away. We are not going to be able to say everything's OK enough times for this to go away. Things are going to have to be put in place. Things are going to have to happen. Folks are going to have to follow guidelines. Folks are going to have to wear the mask and do whatever it is. Stop inviting folks over to the houses. Stop going out to the bars. Stop doing all these things that's helping it to stay here. Because Rona is not rounding the corner. R Rona is just going around the block. It's just circling the block. 
COVID is not, we're not rounding any corner. It's just circling the block. So we're not going to be able to positive think and positive talk this thing away. It's going to take some actions. It's going to take a plan. It's going to take some folks following directions. <laughs> 